Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on Our News. Hundreds of Bahamians march on the House of Assembly in opposition to increases in taxes. Find out what those protesters did that really caught police off guard. Just three years after introducing value-added tax to the country, former Prime Minister Perry Christie says he's surprised the new government wants to raise the percentage. Another high-ranking cabinet minister may take a stand in the Frank Smith trial. Our news is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, chanting, keep your corned beef. Hundreds of Bahamians marched in Rawson Square this morning to protest a proposed increase in value-added tax and a sliding scale tax for gaming operators. Bay Street was shut down at one point as protesters knocked down barricades, sat in the street and booed at some cabinet ministers. Tonight, we begin our team coverage with Jared Higgs. Jared? That's right, Christina. Hundreds of protesters protesters gathered on the Southern Recreation Grounds on Market Street. That's where it all got started as they march onto Bay Street and onto the House of Assembly. An hours long march which led hundreds of angry Bahamians from Southern Recreation Grounds to Rawson Square came to a head this afternoon when protesters pushed back barricades and clashed with police. One man even threw water on Transport Minister Frankie Campbell, who was cautioned by police not to walk over to the protesters. The water slinger was grabbed by his pants and escorted away by police. But that's not the only moment tensions ran high. As tourists looked on, the unruly crowd also jeered at and chased National Security Minister Marvin Dames down Bay Street as dozens of police officers attempted to block them. This is a clear demonstration that the Bahamian people are out here suffering. You know, we need to get, as Bahamians, we need to get past party politics. All the people who are here, they're concerned about the four and a half percent. They're concerned about all the lack of transparency. We never consulted. How could you try to implement um, VAT, uh, raise up to 4.5 percent? Add it on to the 7.5, you're firing all of the people. Then you're telling them you're going to exempt them. What the hell are the people going away with? Thank you. If you're firing the people, it's unfair. Waving placards and singing chants, hundreds of protesters clad in shirts styled with the words, keep your corn beef, made the symbolic trek through downtown Nassau, ending and congregating in Rawson Square. Their message was simple, no to an increase in value added tax. The young people is the danger. Get out, get out. Get out! The white man! Your puppets to the white man! Puppets to the white man! Me and my Jew, but stop taking the bond just man! Stop playing games! You want to them at them and pay attention to us! You should be ashamed of yourself! You want my schoolmate! You can't give us what? Uh, this is not good for the economy. We don't believe that this is good for the middle class. We don't believe it's good for the working class. And we don't believe it's good for the poor class. And so we're just here standing with the Bahamian people. A large percentage of protesters were gaming employees who made it clear they will not stand for an increase in the gaming tax, which could leave thousands of them out of work. They don't understand that, yes, I mean, they call them the number boys, but they're grown Bahamian men. They're men that put, they put their lives into this business, this gaming business that brought jobs to us. I didn't have a job and they gave me that opportunity. The minute that they, they, they increase in the VAT, the majority will lose their jobs. You know, they can't keep all the suit up the downsides and it isn't fair. Do you have kids? Yes, I have two kids. I'm a single mom as well. The signs of chaos started around 10.30 when protesters, led by activist and talk show host Rodney Monker, stormed the barricades that were meant to keep marches off of Bay Street. Now, some of us over the years continue to say that we're going to the Parliament to make a point. My brother, I'm going to Parliament to make a gallon. Not a point. Bay Street ended up being shut down between Parliament and East Streets and not opening until after 1 p.m. It was widely reported that gaming house operators made it mandatory for their workers to participate in the protests. However, this gaming house manager said she was fighting for the right to be great. They like they just don't want us to be great. This 81-year-old was asked if there was anything positive in the budget. Not for me. It don't serve me. I'm 81. 
I've been retired 18. I, thank you. I've been retired 18 years now. And they won't take the little pension of my money? Hell no. Now those protesters, some of them including union leaders, wanted to get as close as they could to the House of Assembly and the politicians on the inside. Now our Gillian Gray caught up with some of those politicians as well as union leaders and found out what they had to say. Gillian? That's right, Jared. A number of protesters were eager to speak with the nation's decision makers. And MPs from both sides of the political divide did not shy away from the rallied up crowd. As they chanted behind barricades, protesters were greeted by opposition members of Parliament, Philip Davis, Glennis Hannah Martin and Chester Cooper, who have made it clear they do not support the Minister administration's budget. The time has come to come to action when there are things that are demonstrably wrong being done by any government. This is what should be happening. These are Bahamians who have a serious concern. You had a government that in opposition promised that they would, it was the people's time. They said they didn't support VAT in its, in its initial implementation. They've turned around, they've increased it by 60% at a time when people are struggling. And so the people are now letting their voices be heard. Marches are great for, philosophy, for, for democracy. Uh, it demonstrates the philosophy of the people that they will not be fearful. Uh, they understand their political rights. Uh, they understand their rights as Bahamians and therefore they're prepared to stand. Uh, I'm delighted with what I see here today. Uh, the people have come out strong and they are sending a definitive message uh, to this government that they will not be trampled upon. However, those PLP MPs weren't the only parliamentarians who applauded today's march. So did Centerville MP Reese Chipman, who was the first FNM MP to speak out against the VAT hike. This is wonderful because my community, Centerville, uh, appreciates that I would have uh, expressed my no vote against the increase in value-added taxes. Also, this out here is an example that the Bahamian people are educated. They can see through numbers. They can see through literature. You go, if you are going to have policies that are not pro-Bahamian, we're now reading between the lines. This as the angry mob booed government officials who were in favor of the VAT hike and even went as far as chasing the national security minister down Bay Street. The protest comes days after a public domain survey revealed that 76% of respondents oppose the government's budget. Also among the crowd were union leaders who say the VAT hike will hurt their members. 12.5% is a bit much. In my opinion, there could have been some incremental advances towards what the government wanted to do. You cannot just say to the numbers people, we can put you up to 50% or 40% or 30%. You need to call them in. You need to call them and have a conversation with these guys. They're legitimate businessmen. They have licenses. You know, irregardless of how you think they get it, the fact of the matter is, they're legitimate businessmen. Even as hundreds march the streets of New Providence today, these cabinet ministers say the crowd does not represent the wider Bahamian populace. We were given a mandate. 35 to 4 is a mandate. This isn't a representation of the 35 to 4. So we're acting on the mandate that we're given. Though they have given tax increases their full support, Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands, Transport Minister Frankie Campbell and Agriculture Minister Renwood Wells calling the march a vibrant display of democracy. I say democracy is alive and well. All right. But this and this is about the people being able to voice their opinion. And I think this is what many Bahamians have fought for, what some people have died for. This is peaceful demonstration. And everybody has a right to express themselves. We got to do what we think is best as a government. In every situation, there's always two or three different sides, and so people will be able to, to voice their opinion. We live in a democracy. So everybody has an opportunity to say what it is that they believe. Now, while a number of MPs stopped to speak to the crowd, protesters were adamant about the nation's chief hearing their cries. However, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis was not present during the morning sitting of the House of Assembly. Reporting for our news, I'm Gillian Gray. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Gillian. Well, former Prime Minister Perry Christie says he's surprised by the Minnis administration's decision to raise the VAT rate while introducing higher taxes on the gaming industry. Christie says his government had no intention of ever raising VAT above the initial rate of 7.5 percent, adding his successor has taken a gamble. Kyle Joaquin has that. It's been just over a year since Christie was voted out of office and he said a lot has changed and he's seen a lot of surprises, one of which government's plans to increase the VAT rate. 
He spoke with him last night. Take a listen. It was a New Zealand model, and it was predicated on the basis that there would not be exemptions. That's why it was 7.5%. And we thought it was performing beyond expectations. And so obviously something has happened and, and um, that has motivated them to do this. And, but I'm really surprised because we, we never had any intention of raising it to 12%. Two weeks before a controversial VAT hike takes effect, former Prime Minister Perry Christie says his administration, which was responsible for implementing VAT in 2015, had no plans of raising the rate of taxation. Speaking with our news on the sideline of the Own Talks event last night, Christie said unlike the Minutes administration, his government conducted widespread consultation with many groups from experts in New Zealand to the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce. We all agreed the best alternative was VAT. We agreed 7.5%. We agreed to consult on the matter. They agreed to help us implement it. And it was just a wonderful, I thought, process that we had initiated. Another step backwards, according to Christie, is the government's proposed sliding scale tax for the local gaming industry. Christie said he is surprised by what he called a radical move by the Minutes administration, adding the government is taking a huge gamble. I have thought um, they would have waited a little bit longer to make that assessment um, because they now tossed the dice. Um, and you don't want to put a disincentive in when it comes to taxation. You're projecting that you are going to raise a certain amount of money. And the question is, will you, having done that? When the previous government went ahead and regularized the web shop industry despite an overwhelmingly no vote in the gaming referendum, Christie said they set the fees at the current levels for a reason. He added that while his party ultimately paid the price for it, the industry was secure. But I wanted to be absolutely sure that we were doing the right thing. And even though we paid a heavy price for, for that, um, it was the right thing to bring gaming from underground, above board, and to, to ensure that it was properly regulated. With gaming employees and opponents to the VAT increase taking to the streets, the former Prime Minister said Minis and his government made their bed and they must lie in it. The governments have to make choices. They made a choice and we would not have done it in that way. Um, but that's now we have to wait and see the result of it. For our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. And the CEO of the largest web shop chain in the country is breaking his silence on the government's proposed tax and fee increases for that industry. Sebastian Bastien, while speaking at his company's own talks event last night, hit out at government saying it's obvious the wealth of the country is only for a select few. We have, we have to, to stand, stand together. together. We, we have, have to stand, stand together. together. As I can tell you this, if they could do it to me, or try to do it to me. Can you imagine what they would try to do to you? But don't hate on them now. For God's sake, don't hate on them. I don't hate them, and neither should you. In fact, I wish they make a billion more dollars. But just don't stand in the way of you making yours. Former Prime Minister Perry Christie was seated in the front row of last night's event. Bastien used the opportunity to read a letter he wrote to Christie back in 2015 after being awarded his gaming license. I'm sure you are aware there's no decision that pleases everyone. So do your best, be decisive, and most of all, know that you will always have my support. Many will suggest that your actions in deciding to regulate this gaming bill is some sort of political payback. But you and I know that that is untrue, and I thank you for truly believing in Bahamians. I wrote that then, and I meant every word I say still today. Well, dramatic developments coming out of the Frank Smith bribery and extortion trial today. The prosecution revealing a second cabinet minister may take the stand to testify. Jasmine Brown was in court and filed this report. The case took another startling turn today after the prosecution served the defense with a statement from Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands. And the move did not sit well with lead defense attorney Katie Knight. Knight, who is a Jamaican QC, says he was shocked when fellow defense attorney Philip McKenzie handed him Sand's statement during the lunch break as he was taking a bite of his sandwich. 
Knight told the court that just moments before the prosecution had given the document dated June 12, 2018 to McKinsey. He said the move came as a surprise as the defense had not asked that Dr. Sands be called as a witness. It was at that point that prosecutor Anthony Delaney stood up and insisted that around mid-May the defense had requested statements from Assistant Commissioner Paul Roll, National Security Minister Marvin Dames and Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands as they all had telephone conversations with star witness Barbara Hanna. But Knight insisted he could not remember making that request. Knight also said he was extremely unhappy with the latest development. Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt questioned the prosecution as to why they decided to hand over Sand's statement at such a late stage in the case. Lead prosecutor and British QC Edward Jenkins explained the prosecution also decided to get a statement from the health minister after evidence arose when he says the defense deliberately brought out evidence that there was telephone contact between Sands and Hanna. He also told the court that the statement was obtained this week because Sands had been out of the country. The chief magistrate responded by saying she comes into court every day and just does not know what will happen next. She also asked if the prosecution intended to call Sands to the stand. Delaney said they would advise the court if they intend to have Sands testify in Smith's trial. Smith is on trial on allegations that he demanded and received $60,000 in bribes from Hannah after helping her company win the contract to clean the critical care block of Princess Margaret Hospital. He has denied the charges of bribery and extortion. On Tuesday, National Security Minister Marvin Dames took the stand and passionately denied that he meddled in the police investigation. On Thursday, the legal advisor for the Public Hospitals Authority took the stand and testified that Hanna was awarded two cleaning contracts. Leslie Isaacs testified that the first was awarded in March 2016 after being approved by then-Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez and the other in June 2017. Isaac said that current Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands approved the 2017 contract. Isaac said because of PHA policies, contracts over a certain value cannot be approved by the board and must be approved by the health minister. The case resumes on Friday. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. In other news, a young woman is dead after police say her Burgundy Hyundai Lancer crashed into a controversial barrier on Munnings Road off Gladstone Road around 6 this morning. She was traveling east along the Munnings Road corridor from the JFK uh, thoroughfare when she would have made a head-on collision with those concrete barriers. Uh, EMS on site uh, confirmed that uh, based on the injuries, uh, she's come on scene. Officer in charge of the Police Traffic Division, Chief Superintendent Craig Stubbs, says the woman, who appears to be in her early 20s, was not wearing a seatbelt. In recent months, several vehicles have crashed into the barrier, which Works Minister Desmond Bannister says was used to block off the road following complaints by area residents. Stubbs was asked if speed is believed to be a factor in the accident. From based on what you can see, there's significant damages to the vehicle and the fact that the vehicle was able to move those concrete barriers backwards uh, to be able to force was a very intricate rule and the amount of energy she received internally based on what we see inside the, in the interior of the car, the steering wheel would have been damaged and the dashboard would have uh, came back towards her in the chest. Uh, from all indications, seatbelt was not, a seatbelt was not engaged at the time of the accident. Cat Island Rumkey and San Salvador MP Philip Davis, who is a former Minister of Works, raised the issue in Parliament this afternoon and questioned whether due process was followed before the decision was made to close the road. On the heels of this latest accident, Davis urged officials to reconsider. The police ought to confirm whether or not the road was lawfully closed. Because if you just don't do it so, and if it isn't, then those but barriers ought to be removed, allowed to be a through road until the proper processes have gone, have been engaged to, sh to ensure that it, it is properly closed. Now you have to wait until a fatality. Still to come on our news, BPL's VCEP exercise to save the company millions. That and more when our news returns.